Taking our control of printing within Excel a step further, we will need to set the paper size of the printer. We can do that from the page layout ribbon. So using employees B, on the page layout ribbon, we have size. And in the drop down, there are a list of fairly common sizes that your printer is likely to handle. And mine is currently set to letter. If your paper size is not listed, you can go into more paper sizes. And then there are a few more paper sizes within here. Now they are driven by your printer. So if the paper size is not listed there, then it's the printer settings that you need to firstly visit to add that in as a paper size that the printer effectively can handle. So I'm going to leave mine at letter. OK. Now, as well as being able to set the paper size to fit the printer, we can also control orientation. Now, the orientation options really are just two, portrait or landscape. Now, the choice of whether to move from one to the other is really determined by the number of columns and the layout. So I would personally always go to print preview just to have a look and think, well, that's currently portrait. And as I go across, there's quite a few columns. Is that likely to fit better in landscape? Well, let's try out. We go back, orientation, landscape, and then come back into print preview. And you can see we get more columns across the top. It still doesn't fit everything, but it does fit more. And then back. Now, as well as being able to control the paper size and the orientation, we have control over the margins. Now, the margin is the space between the edge of your piece of paper and where the text will start. Obviously, there are four margins, top, bottom, left and right. Now, those margins can be controlled from the page layout ribbon and margins. It has a little drop down. And you can see we have three basic choices, either normal margins, wide margins or narrow margins, where you'll see the values of the left and the right are only a quarter of an inch as opposed to an inch on the wide and 0.7 of an inch on the normal. Now, you can go to custom margins to totally control the margins on all four sides yourself. And you just adjust them by clicking the icons down. So we can go 0 0.2, we can go right down to zero if you want. Bear in mind that if you have zero margins, if you are printing to paper, you will lose some of the text because it cannot actually physically print to the edges of the paper. If you're printing to a PDF, that's not a problem. It will quite happily fit on the PDF. But then thinking longer term, Anyone printing the PDF will have the same issues. The text has gone right to the edges. So it is advisable to leave a little bit of margin just so that any printer can handle what you're sending to it. Now you also notice in here there's an option to control how much space the header and the footer have. Well, they're coming up shortly, so we'll leave those values as the default. But we can control the other four. Any changes you then make, OK. Then in print preview to see that you've actually gone close. You can see the top is a lot closer, the bottom is a lot closer, and the left and the right. And usually by shrinking your margins, you can get more columns onto a page. Go back. Then we come to some real powerful options in Excel. In a normal word processor, if you wanted to get more on a page, you would simply drop the font size. Now we can do that. We can highlight the whole sheet and drop the font size. However, instead of doing that, we can actually control the scale of the print. Now you'll see this is called scale to fit and it's on the page layout ribbon. Now we can adjust the scale here from 100%, which is the current zoom effectively. Now this isn't for viewing. You'll notice if I go down to 95, nothing appears to happen on the screen. 90, 85, 80. It's not the zoom for the screen. It's effectively the zoom for the print. Because if I now go to print preview, you'll see that we're printing at 80% of the original size, which actually makes more fit on the page. Obviously you have to be a little bit careful that you don't drop that scale too far to make the text illegible but it will go down and down and down. And you don't even need to go down in the fives that it's offering here. You could click in and type a more exact amount. You might think 62% is good. So you type 62 in and return to accept that 62. And then in print preview, you're then at 62%. Notice that as we are reducing that scale to fit, we are reducing the number of required pages. We're now down to four and originally it was 12. So scale to fit is our option here. Bear in mind also that scale to fit will actually go above 100. It doesn't have to come down. You could go up. If you've only got a little bit of text on your spreadsheet, you may want to zoom up so that the text is larger when it's printed. I could go all up the other way. I can go to 400% actually. Let's look at 140. And you'll see the font is a lot bigger and we're using 16 pages. So in our case, it's not ideal to go over the 100%, but it is an option if you want to go bigger for some prints. We can physically force the file. Here we have a forced width and a forced height. 
Currently they're set to automatic, so Excel does its own calculations. Or we can force it. We can say, actually, I want the width to be forced to be a page wide. And what you'll then notice, the scale gets greyed out, because you can't adjust it now, you've been forcing the width in. But notice the scale has dropped to 48%. So by me forcing the width of my data into one page wide, it's actually scaling down to 48%. And in the print preview, you'll see it is pretty tiny, but we're down to two pages. I could go one step further and force the height as well down to one page, and the scale is now 38%. But that will get the total contents of the printable area of this spreadsheet onto one piece of paper. Just be a little bit careful that you don't squash things down too far. By default, the forced height is at automatic and the forced width is at automatic and your scaling is at 100%. But you can control the scale yourself manually, just experiment with taking 5% off, 10% off, 20% off, or use the force options, force it to be a page wide or two pages wide, or force it one page high or two pages high. And that way you will get the content into the space you require. So with a combination of tools there, changing the paper size, the orientation, reducing the margins maybe, and playing with the scale options, we can actually control how much paper is required for a given spreadsheet.